Welcome back to my workbench guys, Dan here as always. In today's video we're going to be doing another exciting product review on a long anticipated Atlas product. This is going to be a review of three brand new Atlas 60 foot TTX boxcars. I've been really excited to get these in the mail. Uh, I just recently ordered mine from Lombard and they were here in about three days so I'm super excited to go ahead and do an, uh, basically a live unboxing. We're going to take a look at them right out of the box, see if there's anything wrong with them, just give them a good overall review and look over. Uh, so I think this will be an exciting one for you guys and of course for me too. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So you guys should be aware with my format for reviewing. I don't like to cheat and open the box ahead of time. I want to do this live so if there's something wrong with these things you guys can see it live with me and I can point it out right away. I should mention I did get these from Lombard Hobbies and I'll talk about the price and everything compared to the MSRP here in just a second but we'll just focus on actually getting these out of the box first. Uh, so I ordered these Monday and it's now Thursday so they actually arrived pretty quick. Lombard Hobbies has really fast shipping which is super nice and as you can see we got an envelope here, a packing list and everything like that. So I'll be keeping that set aside we'll be able to look at the invoice here and as you can see well as you can kind of see we actually have three in the box here so we're gonna go ahead and pull all these out. They're actually uh, pretty tight in here, so i got to be kind of careful because I don't want to scrape the boxes up too bad. Alright, there's one. Um, well, that's interesting. That's a little worrying. Uh, they're really moving around in that box. There's like nothing supporting them. That's a little concerning, but uh, we'll just keep looking here. I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably for all of them. That's probably not just a one-off. Let's see what the others are like. There's the third one. Same problem. And then the third. They're really loose in there, though. That's a little bit concerning, so let's hope that there's not any missing parts or anything like that in these... Uh, or anything that's been shaken off. I'll set those boxes aside. Uh, the box is now empty. Let's go ahead and clear our workbench. And we can now go ahead and set up all three of these cars for an initial overview. So here's all three of my cars. And again, I ordered these from Lombard Hobbies in Illinois. I paid $39 each for one of these cars. And shipping was only about 11 bucks, so it really wasn't too bad. Uh, that's compared to Atlas's stock MSRP, which is $59.99, which is pretty steep. That's a, a pretty high price for these cars. Um, now, there is a complex history with these, and there's a lot of reasons why these were so delayed. If you guys recall, these were actually originally announced in, I believe, 2018 or 2019. And they went through the nightmare of the pandemic and the factory shutdowns and everything like that. And these got completely shoved aside and put aside. So I felt bad, honestly, for anyone that pre-ordered these cars initially because of the long wait. Uh, it's now 2023, obviously early 2023. And these cars finally came out. Atlas rushed them back out and threw them on the market. And we finally have them here. So other than the huge delay, I'm just at least glad that I got these cars. Uh, in my particular case, I actually originally ordered three other numbers of these cars from Lombard the day they were dropped. And literally that night I got an email and they said they had already sold out those particular numbers. So I actually had to select three entirely different numbers than what I initially ordered to substitute because they were already sold out. At this point, Lombard Hobbies is probably completely empty. I think they honestly had the best deal for these cars. Um, I would definitely do some shopping around at this point, but I would get on it. There might still be some other hobby shops like Hiawatha, uh, Tony's Train Exchange, Train World, uh, a couple other online shops that might still have a couple of these cars in stock and they're not going to rape you on the price. Uh, but I would definitely say ordering direct from Atlas, you're going to get pretty well screwed on price because these are basically a $60 box car. And if you're someone like me who wanted to buy multiple cars, well that's pretty pricey. So I'm glad I was able to at least get mine from Lombard where I was, they were able to basically shave the cost down quite a bit. That made these a lot more affordable. Alright, so already into this video I had to do a quick edit here. As I was filming this, my camera shut off so I lost most of the actual unboxing. But as you can see, there's not too much to talk about here. It's your typical Atlas box. 
Master Line Series box. And then the uh, two-piece shell case. I looked inside the packaging and there was no missing parts or anything like that floating around. I will say with this box, there is a noticeable gap between the shell and then the support for the car, the base support. And I think that's what's causing the problem with this thing and these cars in particular floating around in the box. Okay, so now that I've said that, that's what we're getting caught up to. Looking at the actual model out of the box, first thing I gotta say, a little disappointed. Uh, we have a missing stirrup. I looked in the box, I looked in the packaging, it's not there. Second disappointment, um, I know that these didn't come with the air hoses. Atlas Matt actually said that. But I sort of wish they did for this price point. It's not like Atlas doesn't have parts for these kinds of air hoses either. They have them for their Trincool reefers. Uh, I really wish that the air hoses were on this car. Other than that, um, they have the nice looking couple of lift bars, the Stanray type couple of lift bar. But I am disappointed to see that the grab iron there, or rather the stirrup, is missing on this end. It's not even there entirely. You can see it's actually been busted off. So it must have been broken um, maybe when they put it in the box. I don't know. Uh, the trucks look really nice. The underbody detailing looks okay. We'll talk about more of that in a little bit more detail. The biggest thing I don't like as well out of the box, this is a Masterline car. Uh, normally with Atlas, their Masterline series cars, they have a separately applied door track where it's actually a separate piece, sort of like what Exact Reel does and what I think Atherin Genesis does. This is a molded on door track, top and bottom both sides. Um, a little disappointing for that price point. And again, I have to give Atlas the benefit of the doubt here. When they initially designed these, they might have been intended to have a separate part, and maybe with the factory shutdowns and having to switch factories or whatever the case there, they might have had to resort to doing a molded on track. I really don't know the story there. But it's a little disappointing for that price point. Uh, and being an Atlas Master Line, I mean, that's pretty much their Gold Line series car. And eh, it's a little disappointing. But other than that, the car still looks really nice. I'm just particularly disappointed about that and the air hose and the fact that this one's actually missing a part. But I am going to go ahead and unbox the other two here real fast and I'm going to take a look and see if there's anything else missing on these. So after unboxing all of these cars, I'll definitely say the first one we initially unboxed, the 664439 here, had the most damage. Uh, obviously with the missing part there. Uh, there was also some brake gear that was kind of bent out of place. I was able to sort of straighten it out. Uh, but it's still not perfect as you can see it's pretty bent but um, other than that this was definitely the worst out of the box because it's actually missing a part uh, the other two here not as bad uh, honestly I believe let me see 6634 this is the second car that I unboxed and this one as you can see has a damaged uh, ladder you can see that the struts there or the bars between the ladder those are actually damaged and there's some paint missing, so that's a little unfortunate. Uh, there's also some pretty significant coupler drop here. As you can see, they're very low, so I can already tell you out of the box, all of these cars are going to fail a KD coupler pass, or rather a gauge check, because they're all very low. Uh, there's a lot of significant droop there, so what I can say is that these are all going to probably cause an issue. I might still double check it, but I can pretty much already damn well guarantee that this is going to be a problem. Uh, but again, other than that, I think this one here is the best out of the box. I'm not saying that all these cars are going to probably have these issues, but it's still possible just because of the way that they were packed. Uh, there's a lot of floating going on inside these packages where these cars are bouncing around inside them. And so if you get any of these, I would definitely kind of keep a watchful eye on missing parts. In particular, watch the corner steps and watch the stirrups uh, because those seem to be the biggest problem areas on all of these that I've noticed so far. Again, this is just three cars that I have here. In the long run, you know, a lot of them might actually be better off. Uh, they all might just be like this too, I don't know. But I am a little weary about it, being that the boxes are obviously not the best. 
So I won't keep beating the dead horse talking about the grievances we've already discussed on the car. I want to go ahead and do the initial overall review of this model out of the box and how it accurately represents the prototype cars that came out in 2015-2016 era. A lot of these are still being produced today and I think there's some other variations that are coming out that are more modern too as well. So these are obviously a very common prototype these days. Uh, but when these first came out, man, they were really cool. They were all clean. Of course, most of them are covered in graffiti now, which is fine if you're a prototype modeler like me, but uh, the initial overall look at these cars was really, really nice when they first started coming out. They were another unique prototype car that came out, and they almost have this ode to the older day, or rather the old era style of box car with these waffle sides. It sort of reminds me of the old southern cars, some of those old Berwick prototypes, things like that, where they used this style of rib assembly on the sides and the bracing supports. I think that's really unique on these cars. Okay, so getting into the review, out of the box looks pretty good. Honestly, I think it's pretty close to the real prototypes. Everything looks really nice. I really like the graphics. I really like the fine printing and painting. Uh, all the details look super nice. I do like that these have the separate railings on the doors. Uh, other than the damage to this one ladder here, the ladders are super nicely molded, super nicely done. It's very fine pieces of wire, which it is nice. However, you do have to take care when handling this car because this is something I see breaking very easily. Uh, other than the door track, they do look decently well molded into the car where you know with a little bit of weathering and in some graffiti I think we can hide that in a little bit I really like that nice modern TTX rail car logo I think that's super sharp again all the painting and the printing including on the next load logo there looks really nice I really like the graphics on the side here the load data and everything like that even the safety striping looks very well printed uh, the paint separation lines on the ends on the roof and the top cord are very clean and crisp. Uh, I don't see any real paint overspray or anything like that that I can point out here. The so molded details for the underbody of this car is superb. You can see all the very fine detail that has been molded into the underside. I believe the framework here is a separate piece similar to how Atherin Genesis and Atherin RTR line, how they molded their underbodies for this similar prototype. Uh, but you can see that there's a lot of separately applied details, lots of piping, all that for the brake reservoir, all the brake rigging is there as you can see. I think that looks really nice. Obviously we have the brake rods, they run to the other end of the car. Uh, the coupler boxes are nicely done, including the coupler bars there, which we'll talk about when we get to the ends of the car. The trucks look very very nice on these cars. These are a really nice step forward for Atlas. Um, a common issue that I have with Atlas products is that they recycle a lot of the same trucks on a lot of their cars. These are a completely new truck made specifically for this car. They actually have the very fine lettering printed on the truck there. If I can actually properly zoom in here, if I can get it to focus, you might be able to pick out the fine raised lettering on the truck there. It's very finely done and honestly it looks really nice. And after you paint these bearing caps blue, they'll really pop out. So I think that looks really nice. Looking at the top roof panels, these have a very unique panel design as you can see. But Atlas has done a really nice job molding these separate details, such as the bolts for example. Uh, this is all one molded piece, but it really does look like it's multiple pieces bolted together, and it's super nice. It's actually way better than even what's on the Atherin RTR or Genesis TTX boxcars. Granted, they're different prototypes and they use different roof panels. The detail is still about the same, but these honestly look a lot better. I really like the subtle silver paint tint that they use here. It's not overbearingly metallic. It does have a little bit of a speckle effect to it, but with a little bit of weathering, you can take that shine off very quickly. So if we look at the end of the car, the nice details again are here, they're present on the ends. You can see we have the nice photo etched walkway panels, we have the really nicely done brake wheel, we have a separately applied grab iron with the supports, we have the separately applied ladders here. I think they look really nice, but again, they are super delicate, you can see it doesn't take much to bend these. Um, so I would definitely say you need to be careful when handling this car because I see these breaking very easily. Even if I weather them, I'm a little worried to work around these. I'm going to just have to be very careful. I really like the way they did the coupler box. It's very fine 
dimensionally. It's not a wide, thick, oversized, cartoonish looking piece. It's a lot more prototypically sized compared to some other offerings. Uh, you can see the cup of lift bar is super nice. I believe this is a photo etch piece. Uh, all this is metal and it is actually glued to the coupler box which does pose a possible issue. I would definitely say these couplers being it almost looks like a KD knockoff. I'm not going to keep the couplers on this box car. I'm going to probably replace these. So I do see having to remove the coupler bar just to access the coupler box being a little bit of a hassle, but you can do it, but I definitely say you need to be careful. But again, overall, detail-wise on the ends, it looks really nice. You can see the excess height marking on the ends. All that paint separation is very nice and clean. Both sides compare equally to each other in terms of detail. I really do love the clean printing and the paintwork. Uh, the doors especially I was a little worried about, but after having a model in my hand here, I am very satisfied with the door detail. Other than the track, everything looks really nice, and all the fine detail printing is super, super crisp. So as mentioned previously, I noticed that all the couplers appeared to be low on all of these models. And sure enough, as I checked each individual car with the KD height gauge, all the couplers are low, some worse than others. But as you can see, the coupler has quite a bit of play in these coupler pockets. Uh, there's a lot of up and down movement there. So I could see this being a problem if you want to couple and uncouple these cars, uh, things not lining up properly, or even issues with maybe the trip pins striking crossings, switches, and other things like that, because some of these do droop super low. Now, that being said, I will be changing the couplers on all three of these cars. It's nothing against the stock couplers, it's the issues with the coupler boxes themselves, I think. Uh, but I will be changing all of these with KD Longshank couplers, and I will also be putting little shims to get the height right, just in case I need to. I would say that a shim will probably fix the issue on these cars, uh, but it's just a little bit more work. And with a factory model, it is always an issue when you have coupler height issues like this, so it does need to be addressed. Alright, so what are my final thoughts on these cars? I think they're nice. I think they do accurately represent the prototypes that they were trying to match. There are quality issues here. The coupler height issue, obviously. Uh, the issues with detail parts broken out of the box. Uh, the problems with the boxes themselves. That's going to cause issues. Um, but other than that, I think the models are nice. If you get them for the right price, they can be worth it. But they are issues that you do have to kind of keep an eye out for, I will say. So with all that being said, I will be fixing these cars, obviously. I'll be changing the couplers out. We'll give these a nice weathering job, some graffiti and everything like that. And I think they'll look really good for the layout. I'm still very happy to have these cars, but I am a little disappointed, that being said. Well, guys, that's pretty much my thoughts on these new Atlas T-Boxes. I'm relatively happy with the models, despite their issues. I still think they're nice cars, and they're worth giving a try. They will look nice on your model road, I can tell you that. I'm definitely happy with these, and I can't wait to honestly weather them. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more content. I'll have some more how-tos coming up here, some more weathering videos, and some updates coming up also for the model road as well. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.